Haliho! Ebben a mai videóban a szülőségünk első évéről mesélünk Henryvel a ti kérdéseitekre válaszolva. Tartsatok velünk! We have uh, quite a lot of questions. Ooh, and let's move on fast. I try to uh, arrange them in kind of a chronological or thematical order or whatever. In some sort of order? Yeah. Good. But the first one is for me. <laughs> Why are you here? So, so the first question is how was it giving birth in Romania? Uh, the cats are going crazy in between, so beware. How was it giving birth in Romania? I'm also from Romania, living in Denmark, and I'm very scared of giving birth. You're right. <laughs> As you should be. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on this, because I have a whole video about our birth story. But, well, two things. One is, I think, giving birth, all in all, was not as bad as I expected. <laughs> because it also went surprisingly fast. That's true. Um, but the other thing is that I do think that it could have gone better yeah. if it would have been in another country. I think it would have been better if you would have a choice for the doctor. Yeah. When If you would have a choice for, how are they called? Doula? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> something, a choice for something. Yeah, or like, also the procedures or yeah. just in general if they would include the women more in the whole process because here i feel like in many cases they treat you like you are sick and you don't have a clue about what's it's, going it's on it's industrialized you, yeah. you just come in and you have to fit into their schedule yeah so to answer the actual, actual question i feel like if you are featured by one of our cats <laughs> Da, 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 da. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> she did not want that. So to answer the actual question, I f I feel like if you are scared, then that's something that you should uh, definitely address because um, if you have a lot of unresolved emotions or even trauma around uh, giving birth, that can stall the whole process once you are there. So it's definitely something to, to work with, even with a psychologist, a therapist, uh, if that's something that uh, you want or can afford. That's what I did and I think it helped a lot. And to be fair, in the end, so like this time last year, I was not really scared anymore. I was just like, <laughs> let's get it over with. I want this baby out of me. So yeah, I think in the end, you are just excited to to meet the baby, but um, yeah, also when I was there, I wasn't so scared anymore. Also, I think because I was I just in so much pain as yeah. well that it's, you don't really have time to think about. That's one thing. Things are just happening and, yeah. and, and you're just reacting to it rather than being proactive. That's Oli. That's our second cat. <laughs> the other cat. It's great. I'm, I'm really grateful that both of our cats are introducing themselves. Um, but also the midwives in the hospital are helping a lot. So it yeah. just really depends on, on their characters as well. Yeah, I was very lucky there to get one who was very supportive or that's what I felt like. And I d didn't even really see a doctor until the end. Well, she came in time to time to check on me, but uh, it was mainly the, the midwife. Okay, I think that's that. If you are more interested in this topic, as I said, you uh, or I have a whole video about it, I will just... Uh, put a link in here okay the second questions or like it's a group of questions how did the pregnancy and the baby's arrival affect your relationship how did the first months with the baby affect your relationship I think like the, <laughs> the, the arrival of the baby was but let's was, start with the pregnancy with the pregnancy okay the pregnancy I, f I feel like from, from my perspective, it has intensified the relationship, at least mm -hmm. really from, from my point. I felt like you gained more attractiveness, is that a word? 
you, yeah. you, you got more attractive and um, <laughs> I felt more attracted to you. And That's good because I felt like a sack of potato. <laughs> You are a very pretty sack of potato. <laughs> um, but that's good because um, you handed that over to me, now I'm the sack of potato. Um, we tend to treat pregnant women as if they would be sick and they're not. Um, so they need some help in certain situations, but um, I, I felt like we managed that fairly well. Also thanks to you preparing yourself very well um, on that, reading up a lot. and. Um, we read some of the things together. Oh! <laughs> that's great, that's a good, great, great. <laughs> Going great. The arrival of the, of the baby was a bit delayed. I, f I feel like the... Delayed? For me, yes. The actual day was very, oh. very interesting because I felt like I would be more panicky in that situation but it was just we were prepared we were waiting for it you were really unhappy um, about waiting more <laughs> on on him to to arrive but when your water broke i think we managed very well to just get everything uh, into the car get everything in, in a relatively calm way still and uh, get i to think the we were just excited that it's finally happening yeah. after like i don't know two weeks of Three times daily thinking, okay, okay now, now we're going, go. <laughs> now we're going. <laughs> True yeah. um, For me, the really hard moment was handing you over to the maternity ward and not being allowed inside and not being allowed to visit you um, during that time. I remember I went home and I started cleaning the whole apartment <laughs> and when I was ready, it was 10 o'clock and I was just like, man, I haven't heard anything and she wasn't online at all. I, well, she might still be in the process, so why should she be on WhatsApp? But then you rang and I think it was 11, 11 o'clock and, and that was just, yeah, it was an amazing feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really, really bad at the same time. I was super exhausted after that, so I think I, I went to sleep right after but the exhaustion then just continued because you were in there uh, I think you gave birth on a Wednesday and uh, Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday okay and then you, and I picked you up on Friday so that was a couple of days where I just felt like I couldn't do anything and when you got out of the hospital and <laughs> I think the first thing you asked me do you want to hold him and I, I was just like no let's get him in the car <laughs> <laughs> and we, we put him in a car, in the car seat, and uh, drove home. And at home, I uh, had him for the first time. That was just amazing. I felt like holding something super precious. And yeah, not only precious, but also something super fragile, yeah. which can just break any minute. And and that changes over the year, right? So you, you get used to it. But coming back to the original question, <laughs> the the relationship between us, the time right after. You got home was really intense um, and I feel like I was just overflowing with love. It was, for me, there was this immense closeness because we lived basically in the bathroom for the first month and I just got out to um, get some things up uh, for, for you, some something to drink, something to eat. Uh, we got really nice support from your parents, um, from family to um, give us some food, bring us some groceries and stuff. and. That was a really, a really close, close month. I really feel like I've never been closer to you, and that was just really the the, the three of us. And I also f felt at the same time I don't really matter for him because in that month you, you literally don't. You matter for the for the mother to make a difference for for her, but not so much for the child. And that was something. Sometimes it was, was difficult just changing his diaper in the night when he was crying like hell. Yeah, I feel, I feel like in the first six weeks I barely changed his diaper. It was like 90% you. And that was my me time with him. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I feel like that was really important. Um, also looking back now, um, how he's doing now. Um, I still enjoy it a lot. Um, it's, it's really a time where I'm uh, really close to him, really intimate. and. Um, it was just very exhausting in the beginning, particularly during the night, because in the night he was just screaming like hell and changing the diaper. And it didn't matter what you do. Um, that was exhausting, it was really exhausting. And other than that, I think the first time it brought us closer together. Yeah. 
Yeah, I also feel like the pregnancy itself um, and the, the beginning of uh, having him here, I also felt like it, it brought us closer or I felt um, like I loved you even more or uh, saw a side of you that it's I haven't now. before. <laughs> And I felt I felt very um, supported, and it was just Im amazing to see how your uh, relationship with him blossomed. But there were also times, and I think it's a lot of things coming together. It's also the hormone changes, and being exhausted, and being in pain, and just. Yeah. Overall, overwhelmed. You've been in a lot of pain in that time. That's also yeah. something I, I, I forgot by now, yeah. But there were times, and I think there are still, still times um, when I just feel kind of a resentment towards you because I feel like you just get to go and do your own things, and yeah. I'm kind of chained to this baby, and I, I, uh, I'm not as free as I used to be. And of course, independence has disappeared or yeah. shrank a lot. Yeah. And of course, it's not logical for me to be like jealous of you <laughs> because you can do different things. But yeah, that's that's also there. But that comes also with like two counter emotions. So I have on one side um, the, the feeling of of jealousy as well because mm. you are so much closer to him than I ever will be, um, just by nature. And at the same time, I just feel sometimes very lucky that I can escape into work and, and just um, get my my brain out of that situation. And just whatever else you are doing is kind of recharging your emotional batteries to come back home. And um, that's the two things that are working with each other. And sometimes it's just when I take him out of the of the bedroom and he just uh, cries because he just wants to uh, see you and it takes him a couple of minutes to calm down and then he's distracted and, and everything is normal but the moment you're stepping into the room I don't matter anymore and um, that sometimes Hard. is difficult yeah. Yeah. and you always have to remind yourself it's not about you it's just this very close natural relationship um, between the baby and the mom and that's yeah yeah but I think also something that you can't really prepare yourself for is that in this first couple of years probably whenever you are with the baby your brain is almost constantly in fight or flight mode yeah. because in the very beginning you're just like oh, oh god is it still alive is it breathing what am i doing wrong what should i do different and then questioning it's, it's a, yeah that's yeah a, and then when he starts being more active then you have to constantly have an eye on him like is he trying to kill himself again <laughs> or is he I don't mind so much if he's breaking stuff because things are replaceable I mean if it's like very uh, expensive things and yeah of course but but still you have to watch out for him and it takes a lot of lot of patience and uh, it's, I think it's just very overwhelming for, for your brain that you constantly have to think of someone else. And that was something... And I think that's exactly the point why just leaving the house yeah. and going to work helps a lot for, for my personal sanity because that just ends that fight or flight yeah. and it comes back the moment you're taking care yeah. of it um, later again. Yeah. yeah, but that's also something that I realized whenever you were on the ship that it just freed me, freed a lot of uh, brain capacity up for me that I didn't have to like um, think about you in a way of what do you want to have for dinner, what, when are we supposed to have dinner together, when do you have meetings or stuff like that and I only had to think about myself and I don't have that anymore, like ever. Like, even, <laughs> even when my parents take him or you take him for a couple of hours, I'm still thinking, oh, ah, is he okay? <laughs> That's when a, is he gonna be back? That's a very interesting point because I also have that feeling of when your parents are taking him, there's this half an hour until you, at a point, you finish the chores you, you needed to do yeah. and you can do your own things and then you just feel like, oh, the baby's gone, something is weird. <laughs> 
and, and you just start missing him and, and you just wonder, when is he coming back? Are yeah, they bringing him back? I had that yesterday when uh, my parents had him and you were in town and I, know, I knew that I'm gonna have like one and a half hours to myself and after 10 minutes I was like, should I just go over to the house and be with them? And I was like, no, that's crazy. I have this time for myself. But then I ended up, and then I just thought, I was just so, so overwhelmed of like suddenly this free time to myself that I didn't even know what to do with it. So I just ended up mainly working. But yeah, it's, I think like those are the things that you, you can't really prepare yourself no. for. And it doesn't matter if even people tell you, which. I feel like they don't most of the time. Oh, about that particular feeling, yeah, I feel like they, they do. Uh, yeah. when, when you give your, your child away, away and you have like half an hour or an hour for yourself, you're just so overwhelmed. Either you sleep yeah, or you just true. think for an hour what you could do and then time's gone. Uh, yeah. Okay, if, if I can somehow get my phone from Olika, oh, then maybe <laughs> we can move he on to the next question. He also wants to be part of the whole thing, Obviously. but somehow or not, because he's just facing the sofa. <laughs> okay, the la next question is, how did you manage to spend some time together alone? Alone? <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's something that... Just we, lately, yeah. <laughs> that's something that we haven't talked about in the part of how it affected our relationship, but yeah, I think the like there's a different kind of intimacy, which yeah, suddenly includes another person. Yeah. So it's, it's like a, it's a family, like a group thing, but the intimacy just between the two of us changed a lot or it's very often lacking just because we don't have that time physically. Yeah. Especially because we are uh, bed sharing with Leo and he's just always there. Yeah, and if he's not there, so if your, your parents are taking him, um, then we are usually exhausted or just, just trying to catch up on life. Yeah, just trying to clean up the apartment or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's not really a thing. And I remember there was this one thing when we were in the mood, uh, we got to the bathroom and we both fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not, yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like. Change, but it's also like the, the need is not there at the moment. I feel like there is no. I wouldn't say urge, like mm, there is a feeling every now and then where I feel like uh, very attracted and uh, I would love to um, just get closer and then there is the baby and <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> yeah, for, for me it's, it's a couple of things. One is what I talked about in my video about my cycle that my libido is just basically non-existent. I feel like in the last couple of weeks it's slowly starting to get back. Mainly yeah, we found it under the bed. <laughs> also, maybe because it's uh, it's springtime. Olika, Nam. Nam. The cat is destroying the sofa. Uh, maybe also because it's springtime, but also I feel like I'm just getting all the physical closeness I need from Leo which is obviously different. It's not like a romantical or a sexual closeness, but it's just this body contact all the time. It's so exhausting for me that very often I feel like nobody else touch me, please. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a bigger picture. It's a bigger process, right? Um, your, your whole body is just recovering and um, you're mentally recovering. You are hormonally uh, recovering. So there's just so many levels to that, that Sometimes I forget about it and then I just have to remind myself um, about the whole process and when we look now at him turning one in the next couple of days, it just feels like time has just passed in a, yeah. in a, in a blink of an eye and it wasn't. It's, um, it, it has been um, quite some time but at the same time healing sometimes just takes so much longer and that's also normal. Sometimes you just have to remind yourself of that. Yeah. Hello. But we are in a very luxurious position that my parents are taking him very often and mm -hmm. I feel like that's also something that we got used to and when my parents yeah. are busy and don't take him in a couple of uh, days in a row we are like oh, someone, <laughs> someone take the baby. But yeah, that most of the time just looks like cleaning or catching up on work or some yeah. or something like that or uh, having uh, nachos on the sofa and just watching something. In what ways is parenting different from how you imagined it? What was the biggest surprise about being a parent? 
that there is a very clear dimensional rift in the bat. So there is one side of the bat where you don't notice anything and you have a very healthy, deep sleep. And there's another side where you never sleep. I was not aware of that. And I'm glad I'm sleeping on the right side. <laughs> but I also see when I, when I leave the bed lately, you try to explore that side yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I reach out. Yeah, because I feel like at this point, Leo is uh, feeding much less. And he's getting more independent in the, the bed night, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And very often he's just moving onto his own bed and sleeping there. Partially. So partially, yeah, like <laughs> diagonally. So then I can just like roll away a bit and take up positions which I actually want to take up because yeah, that's that's something that I also haven't thought about beforehand that basically for a year now, I've just always slept around someone else mm -hmm. in very weird positions. And I just, sometimes I don't know how my body is still coping with that. There's this fear of, Oh, when you co-sleep, uh, you roll onto your child, and no, you don't. There's just this subconscious awareness, uh, awareness exactly, and um, you just find a position around. And um, I rather wake up because I'm touching something I'm not used to. Something is touching me on my back before I move around and roll onto it. So I just, this is not a thing, really. Um, and that has been very different from what I expected but in a, in a very positive way. I'm just super happy uh, when there are those moments and he's just rolling over, looking at me, closing his eyes and continues to sleep and not immediately rolls back to you. That's just um, yeah, very nice. Well, in general, it's very cuddly and yeah. lovey-dovey. I think for me, the biggest surprise is that... Having a baby. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> no, I feel like in general, I'm just a much better mom than I expected. No, I was expecting that. But, um, well, I wasn't. I, I had a lot of fear around that and something that I also... That makes you a good mom. I mean, it makes you a good human when you, um, when you question yourself to a, a healthy degree and you, you reflect on what you're doing and how you're doing things. If you prepare and you're still not overconfident, even though you prepare, that makes you better in a way that you are having your head on a swivel. You're just much more aware, you're much more conscious about things. And that was something I, I never doubted because that's just like your personality. You are very thorough in those kind of things. And the, the amount of literature you just swallowed up before or during the pregnancy or before giving birth was just amazing. And I have no idea how you find the time still to read so much more than I do. And um, Because you always fell asleep. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the zone. <laughs> Well, for me, it was something that I talked about a lot with the, with the therapist when I was pregnant, that I was just scared of what kind of a mom I would be. But I feel like I'm much more patient. You're a pretty mom. You're a very pretty mom. <laughs> Good <thing. laughs> um, Yeah, you are yeah. incredibly patient. And that's something I hope to, to adopt from you. It's just really some, something. I feel like we're balancing each other out very well and more often than not you are so much calmer and so much more patient with him when, whenever he is not in his best and uh, he's just, I don't know, I don't want to say fool around or something, but when he's just doing things babies are doing, just trying to figure things out or not really knowing what's going on, not being able to communicate properly and so on. Um, <laughs> the cat scratched me, obviously. But, um, when you're having a bad day, then um, there is this switch in my hat that I'm surprised how that yeah, works. Yeah, you have to step up. Yeah, and, and, and that's just kind of a natural thing. I think we, we never had a day where we both had a bad day in, in terms of we didn't caught each other's back. And that was really a big surprise for me. Yeah, but getting back to the question of how it affected our relationship, I think in the beginning for me it was very difficult when like the first couple of times when it would happen that you lost your temper with him a bit mm -hmm. because I had this like very strong urge of 
protecting him. Yeah, I have yeah. to protect him from you. And then it was just really breaking my heart because I knew that you love him a lot and I also love you. But it was just really this instinct of yeah. I have to protect my baby. And that was something that that was just very difficult to to just wrap my head around. And I sometimes it still is. Oh, but, certainly, yeah. But of course, it's also something that I'm bringing from my own childhood and my relationship to. But same with me. I mean, there, there's this deep reason when you when you lose your temper with your child, which is not developed enough to actually do a conscious decision or um, doing things for a reason, um, and you lose your temper on that. So the camera stopped. So we have to just trace uh, our. Uh, steps ba back a bit <laughs> but I think you were talking about uh, when you lose your temper uh, that you are trying to just apologize to him and say that you love him and I feel like that that's very that's very important because yeah. I don't think it's realistic to expect of any parent that they never lose their temper because there's just always a lot going on and especially if you are you or yourself are not balanced or you have something else on your mind or you are just impatient about for me for example what happens very often if i have something in my mind that i have to do then having to take care Ex of leo yeah. yeah it's just like i just i want my i want to do my own things and then i don't have the same patience for, uh, for him because i'm just like i don't want to do this now i want to do that but this is like literally what we um discovered ver very early on um is that most of the time when people say is he a good boy or a bad boy the perception of good or bad is does he fit in the adult schedule yeah. and a baby is not supposed to fit in an adult schedule and every time we are tense with him uh, in one way or another it's because we have a set schedule we have a set idea of what we want to do uh, he doesn't fit there yeah. and that's what also why we were so surprised how well um, Budapest went the, the, the journey there is just because he fit into what we had in mind exceptionally well which he's not supposed to but but he did and um, those kind of moments are really um, eye-opening for me and that's why I also feel like giving him the, the love and just explaining to him as well that it's not his fault um, if he throws down I don't know the food the 50th time and <laughs> you just say okay you know what if you're not hungry just say you're not hungry <laughs> yeah yeah, but I think that's that's the most we can do, that if we make a mistake, just own it and say that, yeah. you know what, I shouldn't have done that, I'm sorry. Absolutely. I feel like, there's a, like in general, in life, that's a, yeah. one of the most important skills. What was the biggest challenge for you in the last year? What was it for Henry and how did you overcome it? And what was the hardest in the last year? For me, the biggest challenge was the first six weeks changing his diapers because for me I, I don't need a lot of sleep but if that bit of sleep is interrupted then I am very low on, on adaptation energy and um, he had the tendency to scream um, during diaper change and that was just very exhausting that was very difficult well, I yeah. think that was the, the only thing I can think of right now yeah for me it was the lack of or it is still sometimes, but of course not that much anymore. The lack of freedom and just... And the lack of sleep. <laughs> no, I think with the sleep I'm I'm doing surprisingly well or... Well, recently, yes. More or better than I expected, because I have like a humongous need for sleep. Um, but well, to be fair, Leo does also sleep quite long during the night. Well, he comes after you. <laughs> But just this this lack of, of of freedom and that someone constantly needs me, especially in the beginning, that was this was very very difficult for me. Also because he was just breastfeeding constantly. Yeah. But of course it gets better. Well, now it starts that when you go to the bathroom, he's just <laughs> right away following and Mama. just hammering the door. Um, but at the same time, when you you give in to your parents and 
he just says bye to yeah. you, then it's also kind of this heartbreaking moment because he, he has like his, need you. his short period of independence where he just does not need you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. Like on on one hand, it's and I saw someone else saying this on on Instagram the other day that it's really amazing and heartwarming that someone needs you that much but it's also very very draining and i feel like both are absolute um legit emotions and yeah. they they are not um denying each other i feel like that's really really important also to accept that you're allowed to have both yeah is there something in parenting that you couldn't agree on Well, I think so far not a lot came up, also because... We're not really parenting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think... Well, I think we, we discussed a lot before. Beforehand, yeah, yeah. that's true. And I feel like that's also when a very... We were when, I, when we were when I was pregnant. <laughs> Which is very crucial, uh, even before. I feel like we, we talked before a while, while trying for a baby. Um, we tried to set like a, a general frame and then that detail out much more uh, intensively throughout the pregnancy and I, f I feel like we have certain disagreements every now and then or just like um, focus points how much do we want to focus on this or on that and there are just like small battles just to leave and you are much better in letting them go than I am um, that's like something I realize very often when we also talk about what he's allowed to and what he's not. Um, but I don't remember a moment where we were totally disagreeing. I think it's also a question of um, the baggage we are bringing into the situation because very often it's like I'm saying something and this works both ways. It can also be you saying something, but I'm saying something about what we should do with Leo or how we should act around him or what he should or shouldn't do and you take it personally because yeah. you think that I'm criticizing you or, or what, you, way, yeah, what you were yeah. suggesting and it's not the case but it's just yeah it's, it's a very emotional process the only thing that came to my mind now is but that's also a thing for later is uh whether we sent him to kindergarten or not, or when we sent him to kindergarten. That's just something that has to come up at a point and we have to find a, a solution for that. I'm, I'm sure we're going to find a way. And the other thing really, I think that's not really um, a disagreement. It's just something we haven't solved, we haven't um, discussed intensively enough and we didn't have the time to actually sit down and write down the pros and cons on, on that. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the key um, in every disagreement, if they do come up, is just talking about it. Mm -hmm. and, and so far we've done pretty well on that. Yeah, but I think it did help a lot that we talked about a lot of those things beforehand, like yeah. parenting, parenting styles and disciplining styles mm -hmm. and setting boundaries and what is okay, what is not. Um, and of course, there are things that you decide beforehand, like not giving the phone to your kid before they are, I don't know how many years old. And those it are just- awesomely well. <laughs> those are just like uh, changing in- I mean, there are practice. so many things you, you just have to let go. And um, that's something we were very strong on that while you were pregnant and we went to the mall and had um, lunch <laughs> and just said, I don't understand how people can come here with their newborns or their babies in this incredibly noisy and overstimulating environment and all this crap food. And I mean, how often have we been there? <laughs> yeah, but I think that the screen time is something that we are doing good on. We, we try very well, yeah. I feel like um, he knows way too much about smartphones already <laughs> for his age. But I think that's also normal in a way that he's very... Explorative. Explorative and very instinctual in just like trying out every possible thing that he can think of and just like realizing. Like for example, with the speakers, mm -hmm. he just came up with, or, or with my laptop, just like banging on the, uh, on the keyboard, keyboard yeah. and he comes up, up with like shortcuts that I didn't even know of. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, but that's just also like trial and error. Yeah. 
How do you manage unwanted advice from family members or strangers? Not speaking Hungarian is very <laughs> helpful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think in me personally, in most of those situations, I just uh, uh, follow the smile and wave <laughs> approach. And, and venting later on. <laughs> yeah, just like you listen to people, you smile, you say, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, it's and then very, you just do your own thing. But it's very difficult because it goes both ways, right? Um, way too often I also find myself in a position um, talking w- with other parents and um, it's a very thin line of sharing experience and sharing opinions to giving an unwanted advice. Yeah. And for me, I feel like total random that party people who you've never seen before in your life and just approach you on the street and just trying to talk, tell you how to handle your child is just something I could become aggressive right away. It's <laughs> just really absolutely uh, inappropriate. Yeah, I mean, I don't care that much when, when strangers are trying to do that because I'm just like, whatever, I don't even know you and you don't know me. What is difficult for me is when strangers want to touch him and then I'm like... Oh, which happens way too often. Yeah. It's just really something I, I don't understand. Why Why do people do this? And it's also one of those things like you know that it's wrong and you don't want it, but you don't want to be aggressive towards the stranger and it's just like... It's, it's a hole. It's like this kissing and hugging uh, relatives. Yeah. And they're expecting <laughs> him to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, it's more complicated when uh, immediate family members are coming with advice but I think my and, and it's also something that we were kind of scared of I think with my mm-hmm. parents because they just just because they live so close to us and they have a very strong opinion yeah but so. but I think in general they are doing better than we expected like they particularly in the very first part in, the, yeah. in, a, in a, like I would say the first half three quarters of a year um, they were surprisingly step back and just yeah. really let us try and do things and um, your mom every now and then shares um, how she has done that with you guys and um, that's something I, I really appreciate that was also surprising when I talked with my mom about um, that in the very beginning yeah but with your parents it's easy because they're far away yeah that's just a phone call and you just can hang up and just say whatever but and with my parents i think like they are mostly very respectful of our way of parenting i think they are very scared that we take the, <laughs> the, the baby away and they will never see him again <laughs> which is also very telling we could just move to scotland <laughs> or iceland or, somewhere. or new zealand yeah. <laughs> What language do you speak with each other and the baby? This this question comes up every time. So we speak English, obviously. Then it's actually not true. We speak a very weird mix of languages <laughs> to each other. Mostly English, but I speak Hungarian to Leo, and you try to speak German. To yeah, him. but more often than not, I I figure I speak English Reward, with him. Yeah. yeah. And then English is our our common language. Yeah, and his mother it, tongue will be Hungarian. His First, her second language will be English, and I hope that German will be his third language. Yeah. Yeah. And then Romanian. At a and point. then Romanian at the point, yeah, for school, yeah, certainly. And then there was this question connected to this. How do you manage the problems that occur with your son being multilingual? What problems? Yeah, that was what my... I, I feel like so far we haven't encountered any problems. It's rather funny that he... I feel like the first clear things he said was uh, 999 which was <laughs> German even though I don't remember um, having said that to him in a way that he has it repeatedly so he can actually pick it up but um, he identifies things in all three languages, in all three languages yeah. yeah yeah that's very surprising that he he does seem to understand all three and like he's reacting for example if you say uh, see ya or bye or choose he's waving to all three yeah. but of course also when we say uh, do you want to look out of the window it's in all three languages where he points towards the window yeah. and just wants to go and, and that's just really amazing to see yeah but of course he's barely I mean he's just saying a couple of words so that's gonna be more interesting when he ta- uh, starts talking mm-hmm. more fluently 
to see if he's mixing them or how I that's gonna work? I don't think so. That's not a thing really. Um, you focus on one language you speak and you have the capacity to process other languages as well. But I'm more trying to figure out how that is. Most of the time when you have multilingual kids, they would start speaking later because yeah. they have so much to process and to, to categorize, right? Um, and obviously um, getting like three times the vocabulary and yeah. other child are getting. But I feel like he is so communicative, he's so yeah. talky <laughs> that that's not going to be a thing really. He, he, as soon as he has words, he's going to use them. Yeah. You can already see that. Yeah, I mean, especially lately, he's just like very bubbly and yeah. just trying to tell you a lot of things with, with his own words, of course. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting for sure. How do you handle Henry traveling a lot for his work? I'm not traveling a lot for my work actually, luckily. Lately, thank God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very, very um, privileged and I'm, I'm really grateful for, for that chance that um, my company has given to me to, to, to work from home most of my time and I traveled. October, November, I think there were a couple of weeks. Yeah, I think like in October was one week and November was two more weeks, so three weeks in total. And I think that has been it in that time. And then it's just a day here and a day there, but that's mainly just working in town. It's not really yeah. like traveling. Or do I remember it wrong? No, no I think that's, that's I think it. that was kind of it. And to be fair, it went better than I expected, but it's also because my parents just live next door and they were helping out a lot. Without them, it would have been much more difficult. Yeah. And also Leo was not mobile at that time. That's true, yeah. So right yeah. so right now it would have would be much more difficult because then I could just put him in the swing and do my own things or in the swing chair and wash my hair and <laughs> stuff like that. It would look very different now. I would just yeah. tear down all the chairs, everything in the living room. Yeah, well, <laughs> right now you can't really let him out of your sight for more than a couple of seconds or maybe like two minutes and when it's very quiet you're like oh no what is he doing <laughs> he's usually halfway up the stairs by then yeah. <laughs> yeah that's true so i think well you are going to go now in yeah, april that's, yeah that's gonna be another tough month so i'm gonna be gone for a week here and a week there so i can like two weeks at a time yeah and then in june july Another two weeks, uh, it's gonna be interesting, yeah. Yeah, but also I think it's easier in, in the spring and summertime because if the weather is good, you can just be out much more. That's probably something we disagree on. Doesn't matter what the weather is, you can always go out with him. But yeah. Um, yeah, but now is it like, cause so far he was not walking. So he's just yeah. going on walks with him in the stroller, which he doesn't enjoy that much sometimes. But now that he's going to start walking, you can just be in the yard with him and let him run around. And I think, I think that might make things easier, but we can talk about that again in a couple of months. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Thanks for all the questions, by the way. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, we are almost at the end. What does Leo like to play with each of you? I feel like in general, there's not many things that we can pinpoint that, oh, he likes to play this or he likes to play that. It's usually when you provide him toys, he ignores them and just uses random day items and plays with them, like a water bottle yeah. or the speaker. He loves the speaker. So when, but that's really independent um, from e either of us. The, the first thing he says when he wakes up is, Nana for the music and <laughs> when he comes down to the living room he wants us to switch the speaker on and um, he is surprisingly um, resilient to music so he wants to have music all day every day and sometimes it's Tiring. challenging yeah. <laughs> yeah. but in general I think they don't, he doesn't really have uh, preferences so he does have moments when he plays alone but if you but not so many I have to admit well <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Particularly in the living room, because we have an open kitchen which goes into the living room, and the moment you, <clears throat> the, the moment he's playing by himself, and you're just sitting on the sofa, but you go into the kitchen and start doing dinner or lunch or whatever, 
he's following you and he tries to climb up just because he's curious what you what you're doing there yeah so he he likes playing alone but he wants you to be next to him yeah. and just watch him yeah. <laughs> but that's also something that i heard from other parents that they want you close by but maybe not interfere too much yeah and it's like if you want to play with him something he's very often not really interested but that's that's then the thing where the adult brain comes in and you feel you feel absolutely useless yourself in that time because you're not doing anything the moment you're picking up your phone and work on your phone he's coming back to you and wants to do something with the phone as well yeah. because you're not paying attention to him or he's just curious about the phone so that's just like a an issue i, I just find myself um in, in those moments when he plays by himself i just feel absolutely useless <laughs> for me it's also my perfectionism comes in sometimes and then when he's trying to do something i very often have this urge of like tell him no that's not how you're supposed to do it and then i show him the right way and then i always have to stop myself like no just let him figure it out for himself and the blocks for example when you build, build a, a tower or wall yeah, and he just, just destroys it and he's like no 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 why no, it's not for you it's for him so <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, but I think something that he likes a lot in general and that we, attention. Both, <laughs> that we both do with him is reading a lot. He just yeah. loves books. He loves to eat them, literally. <laughs> but I also listen to them. Yeah. Like, for a while now in the evening uh, when I ask him, do you want me to read a book for you? And then he's just like, his face lit up. And mm. when, when, you, when he sees the books, he's just already smiling. There's one thing I can think about. There was a time when um, very regularly in the mornings, I would just take him down to the living room and put on um, the the story vinyl, and mm -hmm. we would just sit in front of the vinyl player, and he would just climb up on me into my lap, and we were just listening to it and singing with that. And um, we haven't done that that frequently anymore, but whenever I put on that vinyl, he's coming and he's coming close, and that's just probably the thing I have with him. And because also it's a German vinyl, obviously, but um, that's a, that's very nice, yeah. And also when he was tiny, you were dancing a lot with him. Yeah, and we still do every now and then, not that often anymore, unfortunately. But Because he's very heavy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's dancing by himself and that's um, yeah, even funnier. Like I feel he, like he, he really likes, yeah. likes music and he likes to move to it and I hope he keeps that. That's yeah. really amazing. Which one of you is stricter, setting stronger boundaries? What do you think about the need of these? I think I am the one who has more boundaries. You are a little bit more flexible there or patient or tolerant. I'm not, I'm not sure. But. I think for me, I had this kind of training with Oli when he was small. Oh, but you fell over the telek. Because when Oli was small, he was very active and he also wanted a lot of attention. What? pain in the butt <laughs> yeah and very often I just heard myself say even with without thinking about it nem support nem support don't do this don't do that and surprisingly you haven't said nem support at all like I don't remember a single moment where you said nem support to Leo mm -hmm. yeah but that's the thing because I just there was something that I realized or I went through this process with Oli that I was just thinking is it really a bad thing what he's trying to do or is it just inconvenient for me? And also now with Leo, I'm just when he's doing something, I'm just I'm just asking myself, is it really a bad thing? Can he hurt himself? Is he going to break something or is it just that I don't want him to be there because I want him to do something else? And I feel like that that makes easier things easier for me or that Some, I had that it, sometimes it makes it easier but for example um, plugging out the baby cam or playing with a electricity outlet and the plug from the camera um, doesn't really hurt him doesn't really harm him because we covered them they're protected but it's inconvenient because plugging that thing in uh, is just a pain. Yeah, but that's also it's an inconvenience for us. Yeah, it's the same with the picture, with the picture frame um, in, in the bathroom. Yeah. We have this big golden picture frame, which is... No, but there he could really is, hurt himself if that thing falls on him. It's less likely to fall on him. It would fall down and it would create break. a big stretch, uh, yeah. a scratch on the wall and it would break, exactly. And, and that's what I'm more scared about than we have then. I shed a glass in the bedroom um, 
not so much. I don't think really he can hurt himself from the position he's playing with it. But um, those kind of things, I think I'm more strict in terms of I, I really try to tell him off and also pull him away if he's ignoring that. And you choose different strategies and I would love to adopt them as well where you just try to uh, distract him with something and that works sometimes here in the, in the living room but for example in the bedroom that rarely works for me because he doesn't in the bedroom I don't really matter except for playing um, that's just <laughs> also something but in general I think we are trying to follow the gentle parenting method which is just not gentle spanks <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Obviously. Like, but you have to stress that as well. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Which is not the same. So gentle parenting is not the same as permissive parenting. Oh, so no. it doesn't mean that we don't have any boundaries. We are like trying to... explain to, boundaries yeah, to him. We are trying to set clear boundaries. So when he's not allowed to do something, then he's not allowed to do, do with that thing. The one thing that I'm struggling with sometimes is that I, I want to be nice to him, so I often uh, present boundaries as questions and then I know that's not very helpful because then he can just say later on as well, like, yeah, no. Like, for example, saying that you shouldn't go there, okay? But you're not supposed to like present it as a question. But that's also like a, a learning curve because we had no practice with that before, no. so... Uh, it's just it's just also a trial and error thing um, but yeah I, I do feel that you are a bit stricter but not not by much no uh, sometimes I am a bit scared that I'm, I'm maybe too permissive well I feel like that there's always this fear of he doesn't like you because you're strict with him um, but it's really it's it's just a snapshot of a moment and he's distracted like for example when you take him away for from from something he he really wants to do but he, he shouldn't do like playing with electricity um he starts crying because he really just wants to do it or you just distract him and then yeah that's yeah or you just have to yeah. you just have to accept a few moments of crying yeah but we also try to avoid that and um try to console him yeah exactly there was this thing that I, I saw I think in a Michelle Obama interview where she was saying that she's not friends with her kids and you're not supposed to try to be friends because if you do then there's always this question of do they like you and if you're thinking about that then you can't really parent them so that's yeah that that's something that is also I, f I feel like it's a lifelong process of separating these things of loving someone doesn't mean that you always like them and you always agree with them and especially in a parent-child relationship i think that's very important that to to know that it's like it's, it's supposed to be an unconditional love both ways and your child will still love you if you say no to them but that goes deeper in so many ways and um, we don't have the time to talk about that in, in, in so much um, detail but i feel like everyone has this this urge to be liked mm. and you can't project that to your to Try, your children yeah. you have to do what's what's best uh, in their interest and sometimes they can't oversee that but you have to and then you have to be strict there you have to be um, persuasive and um, if that comes at the cost that they don't like you in that moment um, that's more important safety or health or whatever reason there there is behind um, then then doing that and that's I, th I think what um, Michelle Obama means in that uh, in that way and I feel like being friends is is nice but the child can choose everyone can can choose their friends and I feel like for us as parents it's more important to provide a safe environment um, a, a place where he feels safe and home and, and cozy and he uh, providing a place where he come, likes to come back to. How is Leo's relationship with each of the grandparents? <laughs> well, with let's, your let's parents? Do the, the short part of my yeah. parents is a very, very, very brief one. They've been down here for a week and um, that week went fairly well but that was also more like a, a sitting lab visit, not really a playing visit. They're significantly older than your parents. 
so it's, it's and significantly further away yeah but also like when they were here it was not so much like sitting down and, and playing with them so your parents are actually um sitting down for quite some time and just entertaining playing with him and uh, i think that's the the major difference yeah with my parents i think he for a long time he had a much closer relationship with my dad because he was the one playing with him a lot but now your mom is bribing him <laughs> she's the one feeding him exactly <laughs> but yeah lately he's also asking for my mom a lot which is really nice to nice to see like for example she likes to put him on the counter yeah uh, when she's cooking or preparing yeah, next food. to her yeah. And they are just cooking together and it's it's very very cute and of course Leo loves to eat so he just enjoys that a lot. But in general I feel like he loves your your parents. He just has his moments when he's just going to the door and just tries to pick up his clothes and just says bye bye and yeah. um, wants to go over. And the, the last couple of days when they were busy and uh, traveled that was just really difficult for him. He wanted to go out yeah. and wanted to see them and they were not there. But yeah. it, in general, he's very open and friendly to, uh, to to everyone, and that's something I hope he keeps as long as possible. I really love that. Last question. Woo! Biggest takeaways, aha moments. He is a character, and he has his very own needs and very own moods, and sometimes our moods are reflecting to him, and um, like. Two days ago was a, a very overcast day and it was a very... <sighs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> like that. And usually he wakes up with a big smile and starts to explore, but that was a day where it didn't. And um, it didn't change much throughout the day. And that's just something... My heart just opens. I just really love and enjoy it when he's smiling, when he's happy, when he's just running around and uh, just does stuff and just, just bubbling all day. And that was one of those days where I just thought, hey, is everything all right, bub? And he, he's just a human being like we are. And obviously, like, weather's affecting him as well. I think that's like the, the biggest takeaway to also understand it's a small human being and just treating him like that, treating him with the respect you would treat every other adult. Um, so why should I be different with kids? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think for, for me, it's just really amazing to see him developing and mm -hmm. it's it's very difficult because on one hand it's kind of heartbreaking that he's not my baby anymore and he's becoming <laughs> more and more independent but it's also amazing to see that process and him just exploring the world. I think there were two more aha moments. One is when I look back at the pictures how different <laughs> I perceived him yeah. in that time and how different I look at him now on those pictures and at him right now I think he's uh, the cutest boy and I look at the pictures and I, I remember your face differently <laughs> um, those kind of things are like aha moments where I really feel like our perception is very much um, channeled and uh, tunnel vision just yeah. um, for him and nature somehow produces this uh, connection that you're just full of love and nothing is more important and prettier <laughs> than, than your own child and the other one is just this realization that our society is just not made for children. They're not made for having children. They're not made for actually let them grow and develop the way they they should and they need to. It's more like we're having this very rigid system and everything has to fit in there. And um, that's something I subconsciously was aware when I was in school because I never really fit in uh, anywhere and. I felt like I was always the the odd part and now with having your own child you think more intensively about those kind of things. I feel like that's the biggest aha moment for me. And not appreciating our cats as much anymore. Yeah, that's bad. Because we don't really have time for them and or energy. They 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 lose a lot on uh, on that and I feel like they might this potential that they don't like Leo because they get significantly less attention since he's there. I don't think so. I think Oli loves him and yeah, Frida I think that, just I think that's a tolerates him. That, that's a character thing. Um, Oli loves 
Oh, accept, accept him as the youngest in the pack, and um, when, when Leo is just like taking him um, fairly roughly and just plays with him, he's not running away. Um, he's rather saying, hey, uh, that's too much than, than actually running away. But in general, I feel that might also be um, supported by the fact that he's not getting the attention from us as much as he did before. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, the, the biggest takeaway is just don't have kids if your reason for having kids is that there's a hole in your life or a hole in your relationship that you want to fill with them because it's and not going to work. You can't fix work. relationship with kids. It's, it's the worst decision to do for a yeah, kid, for everyone involved. Yeah, whether it's a relationship with yourself or a relationship yeah. with your partner, it's not a kid's or a baby's job to do that. And it is really true that they are a mirror and every problem you have with yourself, it's just going to come up. And every time you, you are angry at your child, you are most likely angry with yourself and them mirroring you. Yeah, yeah, or with your own parents or yeah. something that happened in your childhood. And I also feel um, extending that is don't have children if you don't want to have children in, in, um, for the sake of helping another human being to develop and grow by itself. Not just because society expects you you're married, you have your own house, and now you have to have kids or it's whatever that letter looks like. Just really ask yourself, why do you want to have kids? Yeah. And for us, I feel like that was a very conscious decision, it was really something I'm, I'm happy about that we discussed that in depth so much before, and I'm just happy the way it is. Thank you. <laughs> thank you too, and thank you for doing this video with me. Thank you for all the questions, and um, thanks for listening and watching this. Remélem, hogy tetszett ez a videó. Köszönjük szépen a kérdéseket, amiket küldtetek, és hogy velünk tartottatok. Találkozunk legközelebb. Sziasztok! Oké. Okay. Hello! Sziasztok! This is voluminous. <laughs> voluminous. 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 Again, this program is brought to you by Positivity. <coughs> Did you just choke on Positivity? Again. <laughs> positivity. <laughs> Why do I move it? Okay. Okay. Are you excited? Nervous? Do you feel anything? Diarrhea. <laughs>